Hi guys, welcome to our channel. We are the Forrester Chronicles. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We are a family travel vlogging channel and we focus on both couples vlog, travel vlogs, and family travel vlogs. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. And hopefully you enjoyed our travel vlogs um, to our recent trips to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and the Maldives. So those are more a come along with us style travel vlog and we wanted to take some time to do a more formal um, video of how to plan trips to these locations to give everyone some tips on um, things to think of before planning a trip to these locations and things that were helpful to us while we were there. Um, we received several questions so hopefully we'll be able to tackle your questions um, as well as give you some ideas to think about. We'll separate Maldives separately from Dubai and Abu Dhabi just because the video would just be too long if we do it all together. So we'll just uh, go ahead and jump right in and hopefully this video is helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up and share with your family and friends. Mm -hmm. and if you're viewing this for the first time and you like it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if, if you plan on going to any other trips and things like that, uh, let us know. We'd like to share, you know, share all types of travel experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, well, first off, we just kick it off saying we just want to start the best time in our opinion to travel to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Um, in our opinion, the best time would be from anywhere between January and May. Um, when we, we went early May, um, and it was the, the range uh, of weather was from 80 degrees to about 104 degrees. Um, and I think in January to April, I think the, the, the high could possibly be somewhere in the 90s or in the 80s. So, um, and in, uh, also in August, it could get even hotter, maybe somewhere around 120 from our, from our understanding. Um, so, we, we, we do okay with heat, but I mean, not a lot of people do. So, um, it just depends on what your threshold is um, about heat, but we like to stay like around 100 and below if you want to go there so i mean but when we went it was pretty comfortable humidity was pretty low it was pretty much all sun um so make sure you bring your sunscreen when you go um but like i said that's that's in our opinion that's the best time to go um january to may um so next up you have to get there so in terms of flight for us we did not purchase a flight from the u.s directly to dubai um, we purchased a flight from the U.S. to Maldives and then we incorporated Dubai um, after the fact into our travel plan. So we um, flew Emirates, however, you don't have to choose Emirates. We just saw a, an amazing flight deal on Emirates and it's one of the top airlines we wanted yep. to experience Definitely it, but you can travel with any airline. Um, and from the East Coast to Maldives, we paid 800 round trip. Or oh, around 800, I don't remember the exact amount, but it was around 800 yeah, round trip. Right and then we decided to um, upgrade our layover in Dubai um, to a stopover. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things that we like to do to get the best bang out of our trips where we can travel to at least two or three um, countries in one, one trip. Yep. So in order to upgrade from a layover, the layover was going to be long anyway. So we did a layover to a stopover and we had to pay an additional $100. So yep. to get to Dubai and Maldives, we paid around 900 round trip. Yeah. Um, and shout out to Emirates. <laughs> I, 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 I'm the type, I don't like a lot of hype. People like hype things around, but Emirates delivers. Like. So next up, I guess we'll talk about hotels. Okay. So um, as, you, as you guys know from the Black Law, we stayed in the Rove Hotel. Um, and that's like, I don't know, it's in, in between, uh, in between, uh, cause you know, you get the one, two stars and then the five stars or whatever the case is. Um, the Rove Hotel, I think when you, when you book in Dubai, um, you could look at it, you could probably predict the price range to be, you can make it whatever you want to make it. You make it as expensive as you want to, or as cheap as you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just pretty much the same range. You're going to pay, you could pay either a hundred bucks. Or you could pay a range up to 600, 700 bucks a night. Um, the Rove Hotel had was a fairly decent, was, was a good price for us. It was comfortable, uh, clean. Um, it was close to everywhere, every everything we needed to um, be by. Um, everything was walking distance, so uh, that's the main reason we chose that one. But um, you're gonna look for a range, like I said before, from about 100 to whatever your whatever you want. <laughs> 
Yeah, you, know, you can make Dubai as expensive or inexpensive yep. if you want. And this was not the main focus of our trip. We weren't going to be there that long. We we're only going to be there for two days. So we really were looking for something that was around all the action so we can get places quickly. Um, and that was a good price point with just the essentials that we needed and was clean. Yep. Um, another thing we'll mention, um, if you want to see the activities that we did in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, of course, go watch our Come Along With Me travel vlog. It gives you a um, minute by minute uh, interaction of what we um, recap of what we did on the trip. Um, however, I'll mention the booking of excursions now mm -hmm. um, because we did that beforehand. And, um, most of the time we use an app called Aviator for, tr um, for um, booking our excursions. Mm -hmm. However, we found that sometimes if you book excursions through the airline that you're um, going with, sometimes they may come out cheaper. So not saying that's always going to be the case, but it was for us. Brian, when he was booking our flight on Emirates, he noticed that they offered excursions. And so we did the comparison of what they cost on Viator for the same exact excursion. And we came out, um, we saved at least, at least 100 per person or more, maybe 150 per person for when, when we took into account the money we saved on all of the excursions we did. Yeah. L, I'm, I'm sorry, to mm -hmm. but speaking of excursions too, uh, what, what we also did, we did Dinner in the Sky in, in Dubai, and I actually got that off of Groupon. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Groupon is pretty much all over the world. So if you want to do something, I didn't even, I just, I don't even know why I did it. I just searched for a Dubai Groupon I and it like popped. Pop, save money, of course. No. <laughs> well, well we, we, we didn't, we don't, we look at, um, the place we research the activities we want to do and then we like to save money so once we know the activities we want to do we'll try to find any way to save money on them so yeah. we it wasn't like groupon drove us to want to do dinner in the sky we knew we wanted to do dinner in the yeah. sky because we knew we just wanted to experience that and once we knew it we went on the regular website we were like this is kind of expensive no let's see if there's a way we can get it cheaper mm -hmm. so then that's when he yeah i just, I just googled yeah, it it, was like, it was like it was like dubai groupon i was like oh some of this yeah. look and bam <laughs> dinner sky was right there we yeah. just, it was like almost a it was like about 50 bucks off mm -hmm. for each um each of our tickets so uh, that's a good way if you want to check out Groupon in different countries and um, it's, it works the same way like here so yeah that's what makes us a good tag team like I'll do itinerary he'll help find ideas and we'll, we'll of course both help with both aspects of it but let's see next um, once you get to Dubai um, the first thing that I noticed that I wanted to highlight because I know there are several people that do solo traveling um, when you get to Dubai um, there are pink lady taxis and regular taxis. So if you are a female or if you're traveling with a female, you can access the pink lady taxi. So I wanted to highlight that because I know a lot of people are, um, especially depending on what time you're landing, you want to make sure that safety is at top of mind. We didn't have any issues with any male drivers or anything like that. So don't take this to mean that. It's just if you would be more comfortable with a female um, driver, you can look at the pink lady taxis and they're very obvious. They have pink tops mm -hmm. um, to them. Um, the other thing associated with that, if you use the metro or the subway, I don't know what they call the metro subway. I don't know what they Probably call the it metro. in I Dubai, guess. but the metro in Dubai, they have separate cars for women and children. So keep that in mind. If you're a male, you cannot get on some cars there. So just keep that in mind when you're traveling on the metro. Hmm. Okay. So, um, Another thing is is money and currency. So uh, we don't like. I'm pretty sure the exchange rate's going to change. Mm -hmm. it, it just fluctuates. But when we were there, um, fifty dirhams is about uh, thirteen dollars United States U.S. money. Um, so just keep that in mind when you go. Okay. So another thing to consider prior to you get there are visas. So for Dubai, um, for U.S. citizens, so if you're not a U.S. citizen, please look up what the visa requirements are for your country. But for U.S. citizens, if you have a valid passport that does not expire within six months <laughs> and you're staying in Dubai for less than 30 days, you do not need a visa to enter the country. Mm -hmm. Another thing is about uh, attire when you're in Dubai. So when you're in Dubai, um, you can pretty much, from what I've seen, you can pretty much wear anything. Bathing, I mean, when we, we you go to the beach, they they be in their bikinis or whatever, running around. Um, we see you know women wear short shorts, uh, t tank tops, and things like that. But when we went to um, Abu Dhabi, it's uh, a little bit different. It's different. Um, you can't be flaunting all your stuff around. You know, you got to be pretty much covered. Um, when you go to the uh, mosque, 
Um, Tiffany had to wear the abaya, um, which pretty much covered everything but her face um, and, her, and her hands. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I had to, um, I thought God could get away with it, but I didn't know, I didn't realize that she couldn't have tattoos shown. So I have, of course, I got tattoos on my, I got tattoos on my forearms or whatever. So I, but I had a short sleeve shirt on and I had, a, and I had jeans. So when I was walking in, the security guy said, hold on, you, your tattoos are showing, you can't come in. So luckily Tiffany had a, um, cardigan. a cardigan that I tossed on real quick to cover up my, my arms or whatever. So tattoos definitely can't, don't fly. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't, you could, I think guys could wear shorts, but it can't be like above the knees or something like that. Yeah. But women, yeah, women. You have to cover it up. Zippy. And and for Dubai, we're just saying what we saw, but I would advise whenever you go to another country, follow their customs. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you want to go to another country to experience how they live, be respectful, yep. follow their customs, try to find out what's there. So even though we saw some of everything in Dubai, that doesn't mean that that's their custom. Their custom is to yeah. be more covered, be a little bit more conservative. So yeah. just keep that in mind. We're not telling you what you can and can't wear do you um they are more strict like brian said in abu dhabi than dubai but we like to err on the side of being yeah. as respectful as possible to other people people's customs when we go to their country we're not trying to get locked up abroad i uh, right. watch that tv show plenty of times right. and, and not, not trying to make that happen um the next thing i'll mention quickly is um of course this is hit or miss i've heard people with various experiences and we didn't go through any of this because we are married However, if you are not married, um, people have experienced things where they can't book a hotel room together or you can't really um, do a lot of PDA, public displays of affection and stuff like that. So we saw a little bit of both. Um, we didn't really run into the issue because we are married, but just keep that in mind um, and research um, the customs on if you're going there um, with someone that, and you're not married. And so don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing will be alcohol. Mm -hmm. So as you notice when I come along with me vlogs, we, we drank alcohol in Dubai mm -hmm. um, and it is a Muslim country so um, there really is very limited alcohol consumption there and the people that do consume alcohol are normally expats or tourists. So um, the um, citizens of, of Dubai do not drink alcohol. Um, or not supposed to drink alcohol and then the only places you can get alcohol are in the airport at the duty-free stations um to you know take back home or whatever or the hotel so if you're looking for alcohol you have to go to a hotel in dubai to to get it yeah and don't be walking around publicly intoxicated either because you shouldn't be doing that mess no way you shouldn't it ain't but, hot but <laughs> yeah some people do and you get the stumbling or thawing up or something Kind of like, yeah, that you could get you could get locked out for that. So yeah. The other thing I mentioned for um, excursions for Abu Dhabi, we talked about the Dubai ones. If you are interested in visiting Emirates Palace in Abu Dhabi, you have to make an appointment prior to. So I just want to mention that we didn't go. Um, that wasn't something that we did on our itinerary. We kind of saw the outside of it. But if you want to go to Emirates Palace, you have to make an appointment. So I don't want anybody that that's really on your top of list of things to see. You don't make an appointment before you get there, and then you're disappointed. Um, are there any other things we're missing out on how to plan a trip there? Oh, I also mentioned one of the excursions we did, the, um, the desert safari excursion. One part of it where you're in the, um, the, just like the car. I don't know what it's called. Dune sand duning. Dune. Yes. They, thank you. So they do the sand dunes. So pretty much they're like driving really fast over the hills in the desert and they're jerking you every which way. And if you have a light stomach or a sensitive <laughs> stomach, this is not going to be for you. We met another couple mm -hmm. and they got sick during the excursion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, don't want that to happen to you. Um, we did not eat beforehand and I'm happy that we did not <laughs> because if we did, I don't know if it would have been differently for us, but um, the excursion was fun. It was fun, fun, but th that part, if you're yeah. pregnant or anything like that, I would not advise for you to do the same thing. Yeah, after, like the first five minutes, I was over it. I was, yeah. Okay. Like and after you did it three times, it was fun. Yeah. I was like, all right. And all my right. man was leaving the joint at the end and still trying to do tricks. I was like, bro, <laughs> chill out. <laughs> you're already getting the tip, so right. I'm good. Right. Let me make sure I answered all the questions. So yeah, I think we answered this. Um, how can I book a few days there then go to another place like you? So just try to do a stopover 
So wherever you're going, do your primary location and then see how much it costs for a stopover versus a layover. However, there are some um, times that you can just make the most of your layover. So we, when we did dinner in the sky, that was not a stopover. That was just in a long layover. Yeah, we didn't really want to just sit in the hotel. I mean, yeah, that was like a 12, that was like a 12 hour layover. So just do an activity, find out, you know, you can choose whether or not you want them to keep your bag or if you want to take your bag. And also, um, as you know, Trump is our president. So he enacted the uh, electronic travel ban um, and we actually had to go through that while we were over there coming back from Dubai into the United States where the whole plane basically had to go through another group of tech uh, checks and they pretty After much- After we were at the gate. Yeah, and they pretty much took all, pretty much anything bigger than your phone, they checked it again. Mm -hmm. But I don't get it because it's still on the plane. But anyway, they checked it again. They put it in this box. They put your name on or whatever. And then you have to pick it up um, at the baggage location when you enter the United States. Mm -hmm. um, from my understanding now, Emirates have has lifted their travel ban from Dubai. I don't know about the other... Uh, Some seven, places haven't. I don't yeah. know about the other six or seven countries that's banned. But I know Emirates flights... Out of coming back from coming back from Dubai to the United States, that's been lifted, so you can take your laptops there. But and that's not for all airlines. Some yeah, airlines still have airlines. a travel ban. So. Right. That's just Emirates. I'm speaking mm -hmm. for Emirates. Yeah. But yeah, that whole situation was. <laughs> was I mean, the flight was supposed to be at 2 a.m. and the the airplane didn't take off until I think 3 a.m. Yeah. And I mean, and we're talking about an Airbus here. They got like I don't even know how many people on the Airbus. Mm -hmm. It's probably Lots. like it's a lot of folks. So. It was a lot, a lot, they took a lot everything of everything out of your bag and everything. So just yeah, if you terrible. encounter something like that, be patient. Yeah. You're in another country. Yeah. Follow whatever they're telling you to do. Of course, you know within reason. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I mean at the same time they're at the same time they're trying to protect mm -hmm. our country. So I can't really hate on it, but it's it is inconvenient. Yeah. And for that amount of people coming through the gate, they only had maybe five officers mm -hmm. checking everybody's bag. It was just it was, the it was worst. A lot. So anyway. <laughs> But um, the last thing I'll mention, um, someone wanted to know what do we recommend to do in Dubai. Um, there are tons of stuff to do and we didn't even like scratch the surface, scratch the surface. again because our main point of it going on the trip was Maldives and we wanted to um, stop through Dubai. So we definitely need to get back to Dubai. We did um, the Desert Safari Tour. We definitely recommend that. Mm -hmm. um, it's and a I'm lot of stuff um, crammed into one. So you do the sand duning in the car. Um, you do the camel ride. They have a um, camel ride was really short. Yeah, it was really short. <laughs> but but you don't have to choose that one. They have other camel rides in Dubai that you could do for longer. So it depends on if that's what you really want to do. Um, they did surfing. like a oh yeah the, the sand surfing or sand boarding yeah. sand boarding. Um, that was really really fun. And then they do a barbecue where they give you um, a feast which the food was really good you can do henna you can do hookah you see belly dancing um take a picture of hawk if you want to yeah you so could you're, dress, you could dress in the garden oh yeah in the traditional garb and stuff like that you yeah that if you want to so you'll see all that in the come along with me blog but we definitely recommend that um, um, Dhabi is, i mean the mosque is a must yes you have yes. to go there yes and we're we're not muslim but nope. We wanted to, like, like I said, if we're going to another country, we want to experience their customs, we want to experience their um, food, we want to experience, you know, just everything there. We want to immerse ourselves in the culture, so you cannot do Abu Dhabi and not see the mosque. Yeah. Um, you have to. For our world, unless you actually go into yeah. For Our World, actually get on a admission ticket to get in, don't even yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I mean, it was, it was fine. It was included. We didn't do that separately. It was included on the way to the mosque, so it was fine. I mean, we weren't mad that we stopped through there, but... We, yeah. you know, a lot of people do enjoy Ferrari World. We don't know because we didn't go inside. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> but those are definitely two things we recommend. But they have a they have a ton of stuff. Ton we did stuff. not do the Burj Khalifa. Yeah, that's we what, did. We yeah. did not do yeah, that. So we we'll definitely need to go back and and do that. And I forgot um, the other the the six star rating hotel. I can't remember oh, the name yeah. of that joint. It's like off the off the water or whatever. Didn't do that. Didn't do Palm Island. Um, then they got some type of water resort out there. I mean, it's a yeah, whatever you enjoy doing, we, when we go to two places, one place is supposed to be very adventurous and the next place is supposed to be very relaxing. So we knew we wanted to do beach and relaxation and luxury and Maldives. Dubai was supposed to be all about adventure, all about trying new things, stuff like that. So depending mm -hmm. on what you're interested you in, like, there. Dubai has it, believe me. And it's they always change in every few years. Yep, it's there. So yeah, like she said, whatever you are, whatever you're into, it's there. 
Yeah. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have any additional questions that we didn't cover, feel free to leave them down in the description box down below. If any of this information is helpful to you as you plan your own trip to Dubai or Abu Dhabi, please let us know. Please shout us out and let your family and friends know as well so we can be helpful to them too as they're planning trips places. Um, and thank you for stopping by. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.